there, it's Sandy Alnock, and today I am going to be making a seashell in my Bible. I was listening to a former pastor's old sermons, been just going through tapes of his, and at one point he mentioned that God has so many thoughts about us that they're, they count more than the grains of sand. And there's like 75 billion, trillion, gazillion, whatever grains of sand. I don't even know how many. But thinking that God has that many thoughts about us, about me, is amazing. I can hardly handle five thoughts at once before I get all confused. And he can hold them all about all of us at the same time. So I thought a seashell would be an appropriate one for this. And I just drew some crazy lines on the page. They get bigger at the top and smaller at the bottom. They're intertwined, so they make interesting shapes. And as I was working on this, it started looking like stained glass. And that started me on a mental journey for the last few months of thinking about a whole slew of ideas I had for how we could use stained glass in Bible journaling. Not just because stained glass is something that has been done in the church for so long, but it's also simpler art in general because it's line art, it's solid colors. Sometimes there's a little transition of color and stuff, but there's a lot of different styles that could be approached. So I have been thinking about for a long time about putting together a class and I have just done that. It's a mini class. The mini classes are super affordable. There's just five lessons in it. And I thought I would launch that today. So if you are interested in getting one of those classes, it's going to be on sale. And on Friday, all of my Bible journaling and every every class I have is going to be on sale because Friday is Black Friday. But today you can get the same price that you would get on Friday. And then on Friday, I'm going to take all the sales off all the products and then put a coupon code out. So if you're interested in other Bible journaling classes, know that you can get them over the weekend. But in the meantime, at the end of this video, I will show you a preview of all the pages that are in it. They're all tip-ins and you can do them either on vellum or on the um, Tomo River paper if you want, or if you have an interleaved Bible, you could do them directly in your Bible. You could do them in the Bible Journaling Made Simple workbook. Lots of different ways you could create them. I would recommend getting both the vellum and the Tomo River paper because they're both a lot of fun. There's a lot of different options. And in the lessons, I'll also be giving you some tips. If you want to do such and such on the other paper and do it with a different medium, you can color all of these with any medium you want. There's some that I do in watercolor pencil, some I do in watercolor, just all different kinds of mediums. And you can try whatever you would like, but I'll give you some tips through that as well as a study on each of the themes for each of the pieces. So you get a little scripture in you as well. So back to this piece, you, if you were watching, hopefully you were, then you saw me just coloring in different shapes. And I wanted neutrals because that's really what you see on the beach when you're looking at seashells. And these are polychromos pencils that I'm using and Gamsol to blend it. And the Gamsol goes through, but once it dries, it goes away. So that's the purpose of turning it over. You can let it air dry. You don't have to use a heat gun with it. And then you can just keep going. And I decided I wanted to do some doodling in here and add some textures into each one of, well, not each one, not all of the shapes, but some of the shapes and that sort of thing to just make it a little fancier. And then came to the other side of the shell, which is the, the open part of the conch shell. And I put some color in into that and then spread it around again with the Gamsol. And you can use cotton balls, you can use Q-tips, you can use blending stumps, lots of different ways you can spread that around on the page. If you don't have any Gamsol, you can use baby oil, but just know that you may get some like oily stain on the back of the paper. Um, baby oil works really great if the whole thing is fully coated and none of that baby oil is actually going to hit the paper. So Gamsol will actually disappear. So then I got my black pencil back out to do some of these outlines around it and 
just create more of these just wiggly striations in it, not really getting too fancy with it. And then the sand on the other side. On both sides, I put darker color right at the very base of where the seashell is. And then on this right side, I didn't even put any color out there like I did on the left. All I did was move the color around with a cotton ball that already had color on it from moving all the other stuff around. So just know that you can use that pigment again if you've saved that cotton ball. And then went back in and did more refinement work with the black pencil. And I like putting the black down later for the most part because that gives me the freedom to do kind of crazy things when I'm doing the coloring. And then I can refine that. I can carve off edges and that sort of thing and clean things up with the black. In the class, there will be techniques of doing the black lines first and then the coloring as well as the opposite direction. So we'll be able to experience a lot of different ways of doing things. So then I added some sand and not a ton. I didn't want to make it look like it was a polka dotted page. Just put some in what would be the shadow areas right underneath of the shell itself and did that in the black. And then I also took a white pen and added some white pen dots as well. Cause in the sand, you get the multicolors of all that stuff twinkling in the sunshine, etc. And then it's going to be just a matter of adding whatever text you want on the page. And I wrote a quote from my pastor about the 750 billion trillion gazillion. I don't even remember what number that was, but it was, it was a big number. So here's the preview of the stained glass designs. Some are going to be really simple. Some of them are going to be a little more complex, but I'll give you tips on how you can simplify some of them more than others, that kind of thing. There's this one that is on the vellum paper and it's really a cool paper. You can actually use water-based markers with it. And that's what I colored this with, but you could also do it with colored pencils. You can actually color on this with Copic markers. So if you're a Copic artist, that might be a fun thing to do as well. And this one is in watercolor pencil and you can use any brand of watercolor pencils that you have. Anything will work, but you can color this in a lot of other mediums as well. Lots of different water themes would apply here. And then this one is trees. I did it in watercolor. You can color it in a lot of different ways. And this particular one, the whole theme for the study is about growth and deep roots in Christ. And then we have a page about love. This one is a little more challenging. I give you an example of a much simpler one. And this one got way crazy on me because I got overexcited about the coloring, but I love how it came out. And that's all done in colored pencil. And this one is one of two in this, the final lesson in which I show you how to take your own photograph and turn it into stained glass Bible art. The tulips, I give you the photograph for, so you can make that one. This one is just another example, so you can see how you might approach a more complex picture if you want to turn one of your photos from a place that meant a lot to you, maybe a place where you met the Lord in a new way, he said something to you, and you want to document that, then you can turn that into a Bible page. So that's all I have for you today. There's a link in the doobly-doo to the stained glass designs class if you're interested in that. And then on Friday, mark your calendar if you're interested in getting more classes for a discount. And if you want to get on the email list, I will put a link to that in the doobly-doo so you can be reminded on Friday. I'll see you guys later. Bye.